Okay, for today's class, I'll be discussing uh, some of the terms uh, used use on the internet and uh, also on the web. And also, I'll be discussing uh, diff uh, network topology. Okay, so let's start first with the definition of the internet. Okay, so by definition, it is the largest network in the world that connects hundreds of thousands of individual networks all over the world. Okay, so basically, uh, the internet is an infrastructure which connects different uh, web servers and networks all over the world. So, uh, if you want to build your own website, so and and you want it to be part of the net of the internet, so you are connecting it to the internet infrastructure. So, meaning to say, uh, every web servers that you that you visit is connected to an internet infrastructure. So the popular term for the internet is the information highway. So rather than moving through geographical space, it moves your ideas and information through cyberspace or electronically. So the space of electronic movement of ideas and information. And no one owns it. So there's no formal management organization which manages the, net, the internet infrastructure. Okay, so nobody owns the internet. Okay, you may own a web server, but the infrastructure itself, uh, the, or the internet infrastructure itself, uh, does not have a formal management organization. Okay, so what are the uses of the internet? So basically, there's a lot of use, uh, use of the internet at present. Okay, you can send email messages, send, upload, or receive. Uh, files between computers, participate in discussion groups such as mailing lists and news groups, uh, and uh, surfing the web or uh, getting information over the web. Okay, so and other uh, and so many things that you can do over the internet. Okay, so what is a web? So a web or the World Wide Web consists of information organized into web pages containing text and graphic and images. Okay, or graphic or images. Okay, so uh, basically, when we talk about the internet, we are referring to connectivities. When we talk about the web, it is the web pages, which consist of text, which consists of text and graphic and images. text and graphics and images so it contains hypertext links or highlighted keywords and images that lead to related information so uh, on a web page there's a, a different links that you can click and you will be directed to different information uh, different information so it may be a, a hypertext or an image and when you click uh, and that leads you to uh, different information. Okay, it's a collection. It is also a collection of linked web pages that has a common theme or focus, and it is called a website. Okay, so basically, uh, web pages are grouped for you to be able to create a specific website. Okay, or a common theme or a fo common focus. Okay, the main page of that all of the pages on a particular website are organized around and link back to is called the site's homepage. Okay, so we also have the term Internet Service Provider or ISP. So it is a commercial organization with permanent connection to the internet. Okay, for example, a telecommunication company, uh, they have a direct connectivity to the internet infrastructure. And for you to be able, for your, for your computer at home to have internet connectivity, you have to uh, subscribe uh, to an internet service provider. So it's just that it is just like uh, having a temporary connection to the telecommunication network. Okay, so you are paying for that for uh, the subscription on using the uh, uh, or using a connectivity to their infrastructure. Okay, so that's uh, the internet, the ISP or the internet service provider. Okay, so we have the client-server structure of the web. Okay, always remember that when you do something on the network and also on the internet, uh, uh, you are 
uh, you are uh, uh, you are requesting for a service or a network service or internet service okay so uh, so when you when you use your internet connection to become part of the web your computer becomes a web client in a worldwide web or worldwide client server network okay so you may you uh, your computer may be may be called as a web client because you are you are accessing a or you are, are requesting a service over the internet okay so basically uh, the client is the one requesting for a service on the network and the server is the one granting the service to the client okay so a web browser is the software that you run on your computer to make it work as a web client so your web browser is your tool for you to be able to request a particular service and that is a web request okay so so that's the client server structure the client is the one requesting for a service and the server is the one providing the service to the network or to the client okay so we have also the hypertext markup language or the HTML so the public files on the web servers are ordinary text files much like the files used by word processing software to allow web browser software to read them the text must be formatted according to generally accepted standard and this is one standard para for your computer to be able to interpret or to process the information so the standard used on the web is hypertext markup language or HTML HTML uses codes or tags to tell the web browser software how to display the text contained in the document okay so basically it is a tag or a code so basically those codes do have a predefined function and uh, for you to be able to display something on the web or your web browser for example a web browser reading the following line of text okay so these are examples of HTML tags and those tags do have a specific function on the HTML code or on your web pages okay so next is we have what you call as the domain name or domain name addressing okay when you talk about domain when you, when you talk about domain uh, we are referring to a a name for a particular IP address so most web browsers do not use the IP address to locate websites and individual pages okay so uh, for you to be able for your web server if you wanted if you want to build your web server so you have to make it part of the internet and to make it part of the internet you have to have an IP address or a public IP address okay so you need to have a public IP address so that it can be recognized or can be viewed over the internet okay so if you have your server you need you need a public IP which is part of the internet okay so that it can be viewed outside can be viewed over the web okay so uh, basically web servers needs IP address okay but for you to be able to access a, a website you are not referring to the IP address or you are not typing the IP address okay so it's very difficult for human uh, for humans to uh, to memorize IP addresses corresponding to particular website okay so that's very difficult uh, that's, a very di that's very difficult to memorize a particular IP address of a particular website okay so that's why you need to have a domain name addressing so meaning to say that public IP should have a domain address or domain name
Okay, so they use domain name addressing. So instead of typing, for example, uh, kindly visit my website 6.7.8.9. Okay, so that's very difficult to memorize the 6.7.8.9 6 uh, for a particular website. Okay, so instead of using that, you can uh, have a domain name. Let's say, for example, mysite.com. Okay, so that will be the equivalent uh, domain name for the IP 6.7.8.9. Or for example, okay, so for us, uh, for us to easily and uh, to to easily uh, 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 access a particular website. Okay, so instead of typing the web the IP address, you need to just type the domain name. Okay, so a domain name is a unique name associated with a speci specific IP address. Okay, so basically the domain name do have an equivalent IP address by a program that runs on an internet or host computer or a web server. So this program which coordinates the IP address and domain names for all computers attached to it is called the domain name system. Or the domain name software okay so basically uh, so basically you are run uh, the domain runs on a server runs on a server uh, which do have the directory the directory of or the directory or listing of all the domain name with corresponding IP addresses. Okay, so basically that's the domain name server. Okay, so it is a server which holds the directory of IP addresses with corresponding domain name address. Okay. So we also have the term Uniform Resource Locator or URL. So the IP address and the domain name each identify a particular computer on the internet. So I mean to say, for you to be able to access a web server, so it's either you use the IP address or the domain name. So and domain name is easier to, uh, uh, to access or to uh, recall. So so that that uh, you are accessing uh, you are you are accessing a server okay so when you type the IP address or the domain name you are accessing a particular computer on the internet or a web server on the internet but if you are particular with a particular with a, with a with a document that resides on that computer let's say you have your server here okay with the IP address 6.7.8.9 Let's say this is mysite.com. So once you type mysite.com, you will be directed to the IP 6.7.8.9. Then you are directed to this web server or this computer. Okay? So basically, when you are accessing a uh, a web page, you have uh, the browser should identify the exact location of those web files okay and that is what we call as the uniform resource locator okay so that is the purpose of the uniform resource locator so basically this is the location of web files on a web server so URL is a four-part addressing scheme that tells the web browser okay this is an example of a URL so we have the protocol here. This is the protocol. So basically, this defines the service that you are requesting to uh, from a web ser web browser. Okay. So we have the HTTP service. So meaning to say, the client is requesting for an HTTP service. Okay. So we have the domain name. Example: that's www.plv.edu.ph. Okay. So that is the domain name. So next is we have the path. Okay. So the path is a folder on a particular web server. 
okay on a particular web server so that is the folder name or for the folder on a particular web server or this domain name so next is we have the file name okay so this refers to the web files or the file names that you are uh, uh, the, that you are that you want to display on your web browser okay so next is we have the network topology so the term topology is uh, is defined as a, as a way of laying out the network topologies can e be either physical or logical so this is how you design the network okay when you talk about physical topology uh, physical topology describes how the cables are run so this is the f physical connectivity so how you connect computers or devices on the network so physically okay so why logical topologies describe how the network messages travel okay so basically when you talk about logical topology this is how you configure the devices and the computers on the network uh, for you to be able to uh, uh, to direct where the network traffic will flow or the uh, network data will flow okay or uh, the transmission of data will be de will depends will depend on how you configure the network okay so when you talk about physical topology this is the, it is the complete physical structure of that transmission media okay so th that's how you connect your computers or devices uh, physically so when you when when you consider uh, a design in terms of uh, the physical topology you have to consider the following so relative ease of installation so how easy it is to install okay so how easy it is to connect the cables uh, and the devices on the network in terms of physical connectivity so you also have to consider relative ease of reconfiguration so how easy it is to reconfigure so uh, one example is also when you move computers or devices on the network uh, is it easy for you to be able to reconfigure the the network okay so number three relative ease of troubleshooting so you have to consider how easy it is to troubleshoot okay so the physical topology uh, the design uh, uh, in terms of physical topology well uh, you have to consider the troubleshooting portion okay so you have to consider how easy it is to troubleshoot if you're going to use a particular physical topology so next is maximum number of units affected by a media failure if this if you're going to choose uh, or if you're going to design a network in terms of it, its physical topology so you also have to consider the number of units that may be affected if a particular hardware fa fails or a party or there will be a problem on the network okay or portion of the network will, will have uh, will, uh, will have a uh, uh, will have problem on the on its uh, uh, device connectivities cables so uh, how far or how how big is the effect on the network infrastructure so if there's a media failure or even a device failure so you have to consider if that will affect a, a huge portion of the network okay so let's start with bus topology so typically uses one long cable called backbone and short cables called drop cables okay so this is the an example of a bus topology so you have a single line cable here and you have the drop cables so these are the drop cables okay so these are connected with a t connector and usually the cable being used here is a coax A coax cable just like your TV antenna the cable for your TV antenna so uses a coax cable and um, on each end of the bus of the backbone so this is your backbone the single line cable here 
which uses coax so you have the terminator on both ends so the purpose of this one is that uh, whenever a computer transmit transmits data it will not it will not bounce back to the other computer okay so if the transmission is already done so most probably uh, the transmission would end on the terminators or, or the two ends of the backbone okay so in terms of ease of installation so it's relatively easy to install so simply string the backbone cable from side to side so since you only have a single cable here or the coaxial cable so you just connect uh, from end to end so you have the two terminators on both ends so that will be the the installation so you only have a you need you you only need a single cable from side to side okay so in, in, in terms of ease of reconfiguration because most bus topologies are laid out to minimize the required amount of cable reconfiguration tends to be moderately difficult okay so the problem with the bus topology is that every time you connect a, a computer okay or you reconfigure so add the computer on the network you have to cut on the cable so most probably the network will be affected okay so when you cut a cable here so you create a, another drop cable or if you want to relocate this one to an uh, to a different location on the network so same as well you have to cut on the cable on the bus cable and for you to be able to connect the uh, reconfigured computer okay so in terms in terms of ease of troubleshooting when troubleshooting media you isolate the fault to a specific media segment because it is based on a single cable fault isolation is relatively difficult okay because you are dependent on a single cable so basically in terms of units affected by media failure bus cable faults or break or break stops all communication okay so that's the problem with the bus uh, topology so if a particular if there will be a cable fault on the network so most probably it will stop all communications on the network okay so every device receives excessive noise due to signal reflection okay that's the reason why there's a terminators on the both ends uh, to reduce the signal reflection on the network okay so we have the ring topology so it is a circular topology or closed loop of point to point each node is connected to the two nearest nodes so the entire network forms a circle okay so this is a ring topology so it's a the design is on a circular uh, loop so computers or devices are connected in circle So in terms of installation, at initial installation, it is moderately simple to install. So just like with the bus topology, all you have to do is connect from one computer to another, another computer to another computer until you create a loop. A network transmission is on a circular path. Okay, so, so in terms of ease, ease of reconfiguration, ding networks becomes harder to reconfigure as the scale of relocation increases. Ring segments must be divided or replaced with two new segments each time a segment is changed. So basically, if you're going to add a computer on the network or reconfigure or even uh, relocate a computer, so you need to cut to, an, uh, to the loop again, okay? Just like with the bus topology. So you, you have to cut on the loop and insert the and insert the and insert the computer okay so in terms of reconfiguration it becomes harder especially if you're if you if you think about having a very large network on a ring topology so there's a lot uh, there's uh, in terms of affected me uh, uh, devices so it affects because the transmission is on a loop okay so ease of troubleshooting because each device incorporates a repeater you can easily find cable faults okay since uh, transmission is on a loop 
you can easily identify uh, where a problem may occur on the network. Okay, so because it's on a circular path, so let's say for example, if there will be media failure here or device failure here, so you can easily detect that the data only is only transmitted up to this portion. Okay, so that's the ring topology. So in terms of units affected by media failure, most ring use one loop. Faults in single loop affects most devices on the network. So again, if that uh, if there's a problem on the loop, on the loop, so basically if there's a fault on the loop, so it affects most devices on the network. Okay, so this is the uh, the popular uh, topology. So this is a star topology. So it uses a central device with drop cables extending in all directions. Each network device is connected via point-to-point -point link to the central device. Okay, so this is the star topology. So we have the central equipment here, or central device. It may be it may be hub, a hub, a hub, a router, or a switch, and you have the devices connected to the central device using cables okay so that's uh that's the start topology so it may be it may also be from the central device there's a connected device again let's say a switch or a segment on or a segment of a network okay so aside from devices the central device or the hub or switch this central device it may be a hub or a switch may have a or a, an, another network segment is connected to it okay so that's a start topology so in terms of ease of installation it's a yeah, it is moderately difficult to install so the design of the network is simple but you must install separate media segment of for every arm of the star so meaning to say so if this is your central device so every time you add a device you have to consider adding wire to a particular device okay unlike with the bus and ring topology so it uses only a single cable okay but this time uh, when it comes uh, in terms of uh, star topology so each devices are connected separately or maybe it may be a segment of the network it still uh, should be connected separately by a cable Okay, so ease of reconfiguration are rel rel relatively easy to configure. To reconfigure, so moves, adds, and changes and changes do not involve more than the connection between changed network device. Okay, so for start topology, it's easier to move computers. So all you have to do is just remove the the cable and re reconnect it again to the central device. Okay, so uh, it does not affect if you're going to move computers o o on the network uh, it will not affect other segments on the network or other devices on the network okay so unit of units affected by media failure it handles media faults relatively well if a media fault occurs on the network you can use a hub or switch to identify and remove offending links from the network uh, for start topology it's easier to isolate problem so remember that computers or segment of the networks are connected by cables. So it's easier for you to isolate individually. Okay? So isolation is easy, is uh, is easier uh, for star topology because again that computers and devices or network segments are connected with a single with with individual cable. Okay, so we have the mesh or has a point-to-point -point connection between every device in the network together with another topology or a mixed topology. So it is considered to be a mixed topology. So it's a combination of two different topologies because each device requires interface for every device. It is con not considered practical. Okay, so this is the mesh topology. So... Uh, if you're going to look at the diagram, it is considered to have two different networks. So it may be a ring topology and a start topology, okay? Or a combination of the two topologies on a single mesh topology, okay? So in terms of ease of installation, difficult to install. So because each device must be linked directly to all other devices. So since the concept is you, you mix a topology, 
So it's just like implementing two different networks. Okay, uh, uh, configuring the physical topology at the same time also the logical configuration of the network. Okay, because you are dealing with two different networks on a single mesh network. Okay, in uh, in terms of ease of reconfiguration, difficult to reconfigure. Same reason as above because if you're going to move. In terms of ease of reconfiguration, in terms of ease of reconfiguration, it's difficult to reconfigure. Same as reason as above, uh, since you are dealing with two different networks, when you move a computer or a device on the network, you have to consider configuring it on two different networks on a single mesh network. Okay, so that's a problem with a mesh network. So. Basically, if you're going to move or add computers on the network, you have to deal with two different networks separately, but on a single mesh topology. Okay? In terms of ease of troubleshooting, easy to troubleshoot because each medium link is independent of all others. Since uh, mesh topology uh, is a mixed topology or a combination of two topology, so basically, if you're going to troubleshoot the the connectivity of one topology, let's say the ring topology here, so you still have the network running because of another topology running on the on its mesh. Okay, so so in terms of troubleshooting, you have the redundancy of network because it's a mixed network, okay, or a mixed topology. So uh, when you are isolating problem, uh uh, another network will will still be functional. Okay, so units affected by media failure resist media failures better than other topologies since you have redundancy of uh, of or redundancy of network because you are you uh, the mesh topology is a mixed topology, so most probably you have another network that will be st will still be functional. If a particular uh, uh, network fails, okay, or connectivity fails, okay, so that's with uh, that's that's um, uh, mesh topology. Okay, we have the cellular or wireless. So combines wireless point-to-point -point and multi-point strat strategies to divide a geographic area into cells. Devices within the cell communicates with the central station. It relies on the location of wireless media or hub. Okay, so this is the cellular wireless. So you have the central device or central wireless device or access point. Okay, and the devices connects to the access point. Okay, so in terms of ease of installation, dependent up dependent upon the accessibility of hub location. So uh, because that is a wireless technology, you have to consider the location of the access point. So it should be uh accessible to the devices so especially for signal uh, uh on its signal okay so you have to consider the location how strong uh the signal will be propagated to the devices okay in terms of ease of reconfiguration because it does not require cable since we are dealing with wireless it does not require reconfiguration as users move Okay, if you're going to remove the device, so no need to recable it again because you are using a wireless connectivity. Okay, in terms of ease of troubleshooting, relatively simple because each hub interacts independently with each device. Okay, you can easily isolate device. Okay, because you are just connected with wireless infrastructure. Okay, unlike with the cable, you have to remove the cable or test the cable or other uh, devices on the network uh, with wireless or cellular you are just dealing with the wireless access point and the devices connecting to it okay so next is you have units affected by media failure so when portion of it fail all the units in the cell assignment range are affected so especially if the access point device fails if this device fails basically the devices will will no longer have connectivity with one another or will no longer have connectivity with the 
network okay okay so we have also the network backbone so again the backbone is the con connection that holds the most traffic on the network okay so that the that's the cable that handles the most traffic on the network okay so that's the network backbone so we have four types of backbone we have the serial backbone distributed backbone collapsed backbone and parallel backbone for a serial backbone so from the word itself serial so it means that you can connect devices in series okay so it is what we, uh, it, this is also called daisy chaining devices you daisy chain or link series of devices it may be hub or switch often connected in daisy chain to extend a network if you want to extend a network you can use serial connectivity or serial backbone so you uh, you connect devices let's say switch one is connected in series with router switch two is connected in series with switch one uh, hub is connected in series with switch two and the devices are connected in into the hub so that's a serial connectivity okay so the problem uh, with serial connectivity is that if the link fails or the top uh, the top position uh, uh, device uh, fails so basically since you are in series there are a lot of devices or media which will be affected by particular failure for example if this link fails so there's there are a lot of devices which may be affected by this particular failure so that's a problem with the serial backbone okay but that's uh, uh, that can be done on the network you just series all the devices uh, to extend your network okay so we have the collapse backbone so basically for the collapse backbone is a network configuration that provides a backbone in a centralized location to which all subnetworks are attached or segments of the networks are attached so these are segments of the network which is attached to a central device okay so for the collapse backbone the nice uh, nice thing about the collapse backbone is it's easier to troubleshoot because again you can isolate segment of the network for you to be able to isolate problem okay so you have to consider the network structure from topology to uh, uh, to segments to nodes uh, to, uh, to from topology to backbone to segment to nodes okay or the hierarchy of the network structure from topology uh, backbone uh, segment and nodes so that's the, also the concept of the collapse backbone you have the central device and you have the segments connected to the central device isolation is easier in a collapse backbone okay so next is we have the distributed backbone is a backbone network that that consists of a number of connectivity devices connected to a series of central connectivity devices such as hub switches or routers okay uh, it's more um, more likely uh, it's it's more like uh, it's it's like a collapsed backbone but the difference is that they have separate segments okay or centralized device okay or central devices for example this segment is connected with a central device which is the router we have also a, a router again here and we have the third router and each router do have network segments and since they are connected with routers uh, physically they are connected but logically the broadcast are are separate okay are separate for each router so meaning to say if there is a failure on a particular segment and this portion it may not affect the other segments on the network okay so they have centralized device for example this one are, are routers okay and routers are do have uh, its own broadcasts okay the segments are have uh, the segments under the uh, under each router uh, do have separate broadcasts okay so 
um so that's that's uh, uh what's nice about the distributed backbone if there's a failure on a particular segment it may not affect the other segment on the network because they are separated by uh, their own uh the, the segment's own central device which are the routers okay so uh the 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 disadvantage of having a distributed backbone is that because a uh, router exists on different segments so basically you have to consider the administration or the configuration of those devices for it to be able to to uh, to create a single network out of the different networks or different segments of, of the network okay so that's a distributed backbone so you uh, so there should be someone who will configure the routers for them for the different segments on the routers to communicate with one another okay for the last backbone you have the parallel backbone so basically the concept of the parallel backbone is only the redundancy of cable okay so each device or the devices connected or the backbone are connected with two parallel cables okay the purpose of that of those cables are to have redundancy if a particular cable fails so there uh, there will be another cable that will do the job for the connectivity okay so that is the parallel backbone okay so those are the four backbone network backbone we have the serial backbone distributed backbone collapse backbone and parallel backbone so that will be uh, my presentation for today so that's uh, uh, this is all about the, the network backbone and uh, some th some of the terms used uh, used in uh, uh, on the internet and also the different topologies